embroidery mastery um, you will have downloaded the mastery workbook uh, which is on you can get it a couple of different places you can go to berninausa.com and search for that you can download it from there or you can go to the description portion of this same video that you're watching right now and you can download it right from this video good um, these are excellent man little manuals that they have provided for you and I would suggest get it, put it into a binder, your sewing, your mastery sewing one and your embroidery one. Mm -hmm. They're, they're excellent to get, to keep as a reference. Okay. We're going to start on page five. We it are, is, by the way, working with a 790 plus. So when we're doing something on the 790 plus that you cannot do on the 535, 570, 770 we will let you know uh, but most of the things that we're doing on here you can do on the 590 the 790 and the 880 yeah okay okay all right so the very first thing on page five at the top we're going to be talking about the 880 790 770 and 700 module you would attach this module the exact same way for any of those machines also for the five series. So the picture at the bottom shows you the five series module going on. It goes on the same yeah. way. So I'm it gonna... comes off differently, but it goes on the same. It's not, on the five module, you have a little handle that you pull back and pull oh, it yeah. on yeah. on the end. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so you're going to take it and you're going to put the left hand in first and then just slide in that right hand little um nodule that stands out okay and uh, you guys we're gonna not talk while i do this listen did you hear that that kind of chunk noise that lets you know you're connected yeah another thing that i want to tell you is that um it has this module and machine have to be on a flat surface mm -hmm. Even a cutting mat underneath your module will make a huge difference. Yes. And it will not, sometimes it doesn't recognize it. So make sure that everything is on the same level, um, your machine and your module. You can also, and I do this um, <coughs> almost exclusively, as I use my sewing machine table. Um, and I will put that on before I, I, I'll set up my embroidery. My, the unit has, it's in a parked position so I can slide that table right on. She's talking about the slide on table. Uh -huh. And um, you want to you wanna attach your embroidery unit first because it's really hard to see underneath to get it into well, the right slot. And it's hard to get it angled up enough to yeah. get it to go into. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so if, if you, you wanted to, this on first and then your slide on table. And you always want the module, like she said, to be in the park position, which is all the way back here. Yep. So that's a, the reason I like the table is because I think it helps support, especially our larger, like our maxi and um, jumbo hoops. It helps support that hoop a little bit more. Well, and it'll prevent etching. Yes, it will into your because you will you will eventually etch a design if you haven't um hooped it right or there's things that we can do to prevent that and when we talk about etching so it, it'll maybe you're embroidering your name and the hoop will scratch and scratch your name into the stainless steel of your machine that's etching the table will help prevent the hoop from scratching into your yeah. plate okay all right so enough of that. That's how you turn it on. So let's go to page uh, six. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about setting up the machine. You are going to have a zero millimeter stitch plate is what you want to use. 
that refers to this. It's a single hole instead of the oval opening like you do for zigzags. So, um, of course, your 880, your 790, your 770, and 590, no, not I don't think the 590, come with the zero millimeter. Those three come with it. The five, 590 comes with it, the 570 does not. The five, yeah, the 570, does, oh, the 590 does, okay. Does. So you, you may have to purchase a zero millimeter, but most of the other machines have it. So on a 535 or a 570, you would have you to buy have a to single buy. hole. Yeah. Okay. All right. Your um, presser foot. Your presser foot is going to be the number 26 foot. It will come in with your module. It will be, when you un unbox your module, it will be in a little white cardboard box. Um, and so just look for that. Make sure you don't throw that out that little box out thinking it's nothing when you unbox it's in a ziploc bag with thread nuts your, your little gray gray hoop or little gray uh, uh handles that go on your, your um, templates templates uh, what else is in there there's some other things in there there might be needles needles there's a pack of needles in there mm -hmm. so it's all in a ziploc bag together and it's just a tiny little white cardboard box and you don't think it's anything but it is your foot yeah so you're gonna put on the 26 foot. Mm -hmm. You can, there are multi spools that you can use, which in embroidery, I, I really like a multi spool thread holder. It actually sits on the back of your, your machine. It'll sit back here and there'll be, I think 10 or 12 spools of thread. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes it so much easier. Um, it's not that you thread all 12 of them, no. but it's sitting there ready for you to go. So that is something that you, you know, can can purchase at a later date. And that, that comes with an adapter. The multi-thread stand comes with an adapter set inside of it that will make it work with a five series or a seven series or, or an eight, eight series. Mm -hmm. So you attach it in different ways with different adapters yep. based on the machine that you have. Pretty easy to do. Yeah. It's it's an easy setup. Yep. All right. You're also going to lower your feed dogs. So your feed dogs are right on the right-hand side at the bottom of the machine. And you're going to push them in all the way. Um, and you'll know that your feed dogs are in, get, lowered when you look at the front of your machine and it's yellow. The feed dog area is yellow. Then you know that the feed dogs are lowered. We also have our stitch plate set to zero millimeter. Yes, uh huh. And you we have also sure. for the 790, the 880 will automatically recognize. No, it won't. No, you have to so set it. So the 880, it, it, the 790, and the 590 will automatically set the foot. On the 770, it'll tell you what foot you should use, but you don't set it. On the right. 570, you do you set it you set it yes and it will when you're in this and when you're in the embroidery section you'll be already setting up to go and all of a sudden the box will come up and it will tell you that please highlight the 26. it'll have a picture of yep. a foot with a question mark on yep. top of it that just and means just highlight foot. it just just go in there and touch it yep. um okay so thread needle what kind of needle do you use you always want to use an embroidery needle. Um, microtext is not the same. Quilting is not the same. You want an embroidery needle to, to use. Those come in various sizes. I, I like a 7511 and a, a 9014. Mm -hmm. Those are the two that I use the most. So if my fabric is a little bit heavier or the stitching is heavier, you know, the density of that, of that stitch, then I'm going to use a 9014. If it's a... With thread that matches. With, right. So you need to have a 40 weight or bigger thread in a 9014. When you're using finer thread, like a 50 weight, a 60 weight, an 80 weight, you can use that 7511. Right. For the most part, you will be using 9014s. So, you know, it's... um. <clears throat> it's it is one of those things is that you just you want to have them you have to have them in order to get 
so that you don't, because what will happen is that your thread will start shearing and, and you'll have thread breakage all the time. So you yeah. just, it's imperative that you have the right needle and thread combination. And you can cause skip stitches in your embroidery, yeah. which is terrible. If you have a dull needle, so change it with yeah. your new projects. Yeah. Needles are cheap. Um, threading tips for modules with both a horizontal and vertical spool pen. When I'm embroidering, I prefer to have a the, the spool threader, the um, multi, -spool multi stand. stand, or one with that you can put the thread behind the machine and it comes up and then it and then you thread it through. I think that it it works the best with that. That's the best um, luck that I have is with that. So you. You know, either the multi spool or the single spool stand be, that sits behind you, and that. So that's that's something that you can um, think about. Now, can I use? You can use this, Lisa. Absolutely. You, you know, on here. But what sometimes what will happen because the machines are going so fast that it will flip that thread up out of and the it'll tension. It'll flip it out of this. Yep. Is what happens. It, it recoils and yep. it'll flip around this. Now, <clears throat> different types of threads are gonna go on either this stand or this stand. So cross wound or thread that is wound like this will go on the horizontal spool stand. Mm -hmm. The end of like an isocord cap is perfect for your small spool cap to go right in there. That's not gonna interfere with any of your thread. You're not going to catch on that. So use that small spool uh, cap for your isocord. If you're using isocord or any other type of thread that ends like that, that'll be out of the way. Don't use the great big spool caps with these because your thread is then going against something else that's even more friction that it's doing. Mm -hmm. Stacked or straight wound spools would be fed from here. You would put them on this spool stand, this one right here. And that is for ones that don't go like this. That's for ones that are literally straight all the way around. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, the thread for the bobbin. We, I've been testing one, one thread and um, for bobbin thread. It's a, it's a lighter weight thread. And um, I am much happier with the Aurafil bobbin thread. I so this is the isocord. I'm sorry, OESD. OESD. This is the OESD bobbin thread. It's a polyester. It's polyester. It is thicker than the Aurifil cotton. I find from what we've done so far mm -hmm. that this will pull up and more frequently, it. and you see this more so than you see the Aurifil 60 weight cotton. Yeah. It's a finer thread and it doesn't pull up as much. We're using this because it's a nice, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a nice thread, yeah. but you, it will pull up and you will see it more so than you will the 60 weight Aurifil cotton. And I mean, we had gotten it in the store and so I thought I wanted, I needed to see how it was going to work, but I will say that I prefer the Aurifil. Yeah, I do too. You know, so, um, so you do want to use a bobbin weight thread in your, on your, when you wind your bobbins. Mm -hmm. Now saying that, you there's always rules that you can break. Yes. So freestanding lace. Freestanding lace. You're going to use the same thread that you use on the top in the bobbin. Yep. Or if you were to do a towel mm -hmm. or something like that, then you're going to see Two that sided. under a side. Yeah. Then you're going to use the same thread. Cut work. Cut cut work you would too. So it's most of the time, it's white, it's the bobbin thread weight that you're going to use unless those other situations come up. Now, I will, um, there's usually this thread comes white or black. Mm -hmm. I found when we did the training with the, with our big industrial, um, he said they always use white. So, you know, it, it's, if it, that's a personal thing, if I was doing a black 
black something on the back. I might, because I wouldn't want the white to come up. Well, we have some black t-shirts we're going to embroider back there. Yeah. We'll probably use black. Use black on, on the back of them. Yeah. It's just, it's just a, more of a safety where you don't have, you're not seeing that thread coming up at all. Yeah. So, okay. Um, winding, you're going to wind your bobbin. The bobbins are what the, they're 60 weight, right? Where the thread is 40 weight. Um, when you're doing, you're going to put the bobbin in your bobbin case, just like you do normally. Now that is for the five and the seven series. Uh -huh. However, the eight is different. The eight is different, but also on the five and the seven, if you're having issues consistently with bobbin thread mm -hmm. pulling up, regardless of what weight you're using, you can purchase an additional bobbin case. You can t purchase the high tension bobbin case, which will pull the thread down a little more and you'll have less of your bobbin thread pulling up if you find you have an issue with that that's the yellow bobbin case the high tension bobbin case you can also use that high tension bobbin case for um free motion quilting yes it's a it's made for that too yes to keep that tension down so you you will know how to thread your bobbin um in an 880 it's the bobbin is threaded a little bit different mm -hmm than normal and you, then you can see that yeah the bottom of page six right where it's gonna go and it's just a quick little movement so instead of going in and over you go in out and over and it kind of gets it in an extra little tensioner yep. for the 880 okay all right so let's turn to seven yep and now we're going to talk about um hooping fabric and stabilizing it um you know, there's a lot of information on page seven that they can read. Mm -hmm. um, when you're when you're hooping, hooping is probably the hooping and stabilizer is probably your biggest issues that you ever have with embroidery. Yeah. Once you've hooped and once you've gotten the right stabilizer, the machine is going to do what it does. Right. Um, but you finding the right combination of stabilizers, and then there's many stabilizers um, for many different types of projects. Mm -hmm. You have, we carry um, poly mesh, mm -hmm. we carry cutaway. So, so poly mesh, you're going to use it for maybe wearables? Wearables, onesies, like baby things, things on the back. Very soft. Right. And it is not, it is a cutaway, it's mm -hmm. not a tearaway. So it stays, mainly it stays in that project. But it's not going to irritate your no, skin it's when real it's up against soft. you. Um, then you have tearaway. Tear away. Now tearaway is made so that it does exactly that. It tears away. It is also, um, you you have a stitch count that that tearaway will, will hold up under. So if you, a lot of them might be like 8,000 stitches. Mm -hmm. So if you go over 8,000 stitches, then I'm going to do what I call floating another piece of tearaway underneath my hoop so that it will stabilize it even more. Now you can do that if you have just the lightweight tearaway. However, mm -hmm. they do make a heavyweight they tearaway. Do. And they make a medium weight. Which are for denser stitches. Yep. So, so they're... We There's could go on on, on stabilizers on, forever. Forever. For a great resource for stabilizers and exactly what stabilizer to use for exactly what project, you're going to use the Big Book of Embroidery. It yeah. is an excellent resource. It, it has an entire chapter on stabilizers and what you use for what type of project. So tear away, cut away, wash away, um, hydro toppers. film, toppers, um, stable stick, stable stick, all this, this stuff just, you can get. And all of those, and what you're going to have to learn is that you have a, it's a trial and error. Yes. You have to play with it um, to see what's going to work best. Uh, also, um, in the big book of embroidery is a whole section on hooping. Yes and learning how to hoop properly. Mm -hmm. And so we can go through all that, but it will be sitting here for- We'll be here for hours. <laughs> in, in, in days sometimes, because you so have to test it. We're not gonna do that. No. No. So read this over, 
Find your resources of hooping and stabilizers. Get yourself a big book yep. of embroidery. I mean, it's, it's, it's got everything you ever needed to know about embroidery. It's an excellent book. Yeah. Now, um, on that a hooping tip, a temporary, they talk about temporary adhesives great. Lisa, you hate it. I like it. <laughs> Um, it's just something I, you know. I don't like the sticky goo it leaves on my, my hoops. But you know I'm what? Like, ew, ew. There are <laughs> cleaners that take that yeah, right yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like it. There I are cleaners that clean it. your floors too, but my floors mm -hmm. are still dirty. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where a um, the personal cleaning, <laughs> cleaning person comes in and does that for you. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's turn to page eight. Okay. Page eight is setting, it's talking about setting up your, uh, and attaching your hoops. Um, it also is showing you the different sizes of hoops that Bernina has. Mm -hmm. uh, on our 790, the biggest hoop that we have is the Maxi. So let's just, let's review these. So in the accessory book that you get with a new machine, it shows a hoop that is no longer available. So the picture of the hoops that are right here are the hoops that are available. With your machine, so when you purchase a 590, 570, 535, 770, 790, 880, um, any of those machines will come standard with three hoops. They come with the small hoop, the medium hoop, and the large oval. Additionally, you can purchase the mega hoop. The mega hoop is a skinny hoop, so six inches wide, but it's almost 16 inches long and it's for like continuous embroidery or mm -hmm. uh, border designs, long skinny things. So that's a purchase one. You can purchase the hoop and buddies, which is to do hats with if you want to do hats. And then you can purchase the larger hoops. So the midi hoop for the 570 is the largest hoop that you can use the entire width of. So it is six and a half inches wide. It's a little bit wider than the large oval. Your large oval is five inches, 5.7 inches. The midi is 6.5 inches. So this is the largest hoop you can use on the 570 and use the entire width of it. The next one up is the maxi hoop. That one is 8.3 inches wide, 15.8 inches deep. That one is the largest hoop that you can use the entire width of on a seven series. You can use this hoop on a five series. You just will have part of it grayed out when you put it on your module. And then there's the jumbo hoop. The jumbo hoop is 10.3 inches wide. This hoop is the largest hoop that you can use on the eight series. You can use the entire width of this hoop and it's also 15.8 inches long. So it's the same inches lengthwise as the maxi, it's just wider. This you can use the entire hoop on, on the 880. If you put it on a seven series, part of it will be grayed out because you can't use the entire width of the hoop. You can still use it, just not the full width. Okay, so full width, five series, full width, maxi, seven series, full width, jumbo, eight series. Now, the one thing that Lisa didn't show you is on, and I think you can see it in this, on the on the hoops, the three hoops that come with you, and I think the, the um, mega hoop, all has the screw. Oh, yeah. The screw on type of attaching the um, inner hoop, tightening it down. Mm -hmm. um, works fine. Mm -hmm. But once you try that, that the um, ratchet, which yeah. if you look here, it's a, it's a ratchet. I can type. go get one. Do you have, do we have I one? think so, yes. I think right over there, maybe. I think I have a mini hoop right here. And we'll show you what the difference on that is. Because they are, it, it just makes it so much easier. Simple. So instead of having to use that finger screw, I can just go like that. And that the inner hoop comes right out. And then when I tighten it, it, it yeah. Then so it's you tight. can see how much easier that would be. Well, if you have arthritis or anything yeah. in your fingers, this is a heck of a lot easier than, than this. that. Yes. And this is a heck of a lot easier yeah. than that. 
So there, that that's just some of what's on the newer, um, the hoops. bigger hoops and that. Yep. And th okay. it's nice. So we're going to finish up this segment here, um, and we're going to talk about these um, inserts. Yep. These are your templates. They come the three of your with your, the hoops that come with your machine. You will have three different um, plastic templates with a little bit of a. Um, there's little gray clips that clip onto them and then and that's how you can use for marking right you can mark your stuff with that so you can just see it's laying inside it's a grid line so you'll have three different sizes with the hoops that come with your machine and then when you purchase not the hoop and buddies because they you're going to put the hat in there but when you purchase the mega the midi the maxi or the jumbo they will come with mm -hmm. the clips and the uh the template template yep yeah. And so there's holes in those templates that you you place that onto your hoop and then you, you can mark, mark the holes. Like right there's one and there's one and there's one. So you can mark along the grid line so that you can see exactly where your design yep. is going to line up. And then you can place your fabric in there right. and, and do that. All right. So those are things. Also with their machine, they're going to get a, a packet of different types of stabilizers yes. and you will um and then the plastic templates are in that yep. package so it'll look like this looks like this so you get a bunch of stabilizer types all different stabilizer types and then here are the templates where there's two of the same size that's weird here are the templates we're talking about for the large oval hoop these would be great placement um, tools yep. to use. All right, we are going to wrap it up for this one. So this is three of them. <laughs> okay. No, that's a different size. Is this for MIDI? That yes. might be the MIDI. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to wrap it up for today. Um, there's this one. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up for today for this particular episode so you know all about your stabilizers. Look into that big book of embroidery that will get you all kinds of information that is extremely helpful about all these different kinds of stabilizers. It can be overwhelming. Um, and we will be back next time and we're going to start in the on-screen menus next time.